Okay, so this is the final review part one, and it, you need to have the, the actual um, paper version of the final review or electronic version, uh, version in front of you because I won't be uh, showing all of the problems, just showing you how to do them. All right, this is number one, and we're matching each function name with its equation. So the first one with the two straight lines around the x, that is the absolute value function. So that's d. Um, x cubed is called the cubic function, so c. And 1 over x is the reciprocal function, so that's b. f of x equals x, that's the identity function. Um, so that's a linear and uh, cube root of x is the cubic, cube root function. 1 over x squared is the reciprocal squared function. x squared is quadratic, so g. Square root of x is the square root function, so h. All right, number two. We are putting 2 less than x less than or equal to 5 or x greater than 7 into interval notation. So that's going to be 2 with parentheses because there's no equal to, comma 5 with a bracket because there is an equal to, or is um, union, so like a U shape. And then x greater than 7, so we start with 7, not including it though, so parentheses, not bracket, and then comma infinity, and we always put parentheses around um, infinity or negative infinity. So that's number 2. Number 3, uh, the domain of the square root of 5x plus 8. You need to take the uh, inside of that expression and set it greater than or equal to 0 because we can't take the square root of a negative, so we want to find all the values where that expression is going to be uh, positive or zero. So we get 5x greater than or equal to negative 8, or x is greater than or equal to negative 8 over 5. And then you just want to put that in interval notation, so negative 8 fifths, comma, infinity. Number 4. Number four is this uh, table of values, and we're using composition of functions. So for these, you want to start in the inside. So we need to find g of six first. So we go down until we find six, and g of six is eight. So then we need to plug eight in for f of x, and it's seven. So the first one is seven. The next one, we want f of 7, so go down to 7, f of 7 is 5, plug 5 in, g of 5 is 7. So that one's also 7. Um, f of 5, so we go down to, we see 5, f of 5 is 8, and then if we plug 8 into f again, we get 7. And the last one, um, g of 1, so 1 is here, g of 1 is 6. If we plug 6 into g again, we get 8. And that's not a very good color on here, so I'm going to change it to red. So 7, 7, 7, 8. Number 5. We have the function h of x is equal to x plus 9 to the fifth power. And we want to uh, find, it, it, we're calling f of x the function x squared. So if we're doing the composition, um, f composed of g of x, then what must g of x be? 
Well, g of x is our inside function, and that's x plus 9. So you would take x plus 9, and you would, oh, x to the fifth, rather, I'm sorry, and you would take all that to the fifth power, and that would give you f of g. Number six says that a town's population has been growing linearly. In, 20, in 2003, the population was 64,000. The population has been growing by 2,700 people each year. Write an equation for the population X years after 2003. So in 2003, our starting point, it was 64,000. So our y-intercept, or our b, is 64,000. And then it also gives you the rate of change. It says it's been growing by 2,700 people per year. So our m is 2,700. So our p, our function, is going to be 2,700x plus 64,000. And we want to use that to find the population in um, 2009. So we would do p of 9, which is 2,700 times 9, plus 64,000, and that equals 80,200. Number 7 is a graph, so I'm going to pull that in. Okay, it asks for the slope of the line. So you want to find two exact points on the line, like I see right here at negative 5, or 0, negative 5, and there's another exact point, like right on the grid at 5, negative 2. And if I make a triangle with those and get my rise over run, I see that it's going up 1, 2, 3, so 3 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is the run. And the line is going up from left to right, so it's a positive 3 fifths. In number 8, you're missing a bit of information um, because it tells you to select an answer. So I'll go over that. But it says Terry is skiing down a steep hill. Terry's elevation, E of t, in feet after t seconds is given by E of t equals 3200 minus 60t. So the equation tell us, tells us that Terry started and uh, we have to pick either at a time of or at an ele elevation of and then put the amount. Um, so it, the function has to do with her elevation so we're gonna say that Terry started at an elevation of And that would be the 3,200 feet. Okay, and then, oh, it's a, Terry is a him. Okay. Um, and then we have to also select either seconds, uh, seconds each, second each foot, feet, or feet each second. So of course there we're going to choose um, feet. So I already wrote feet there, but your second drop down is going to be feet. So uh, elevation of and 3,200 feet. Okay. And his select an answer um, for that part where our choices are time and elevation is increasing or decreasing. So what's, a, what's going to be increasing or decreasing would be the um, da, 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 da. sorry would be the elevation. So the elevation is decreasing.
by, um, so that we need the slope for, and that's going to be 60, because uh, the slope is uh, minus 60, and it's going to be, okay, so the elevation is decreasing by uh, 60, and then we have to pick second each foot, seconds, or feet, feet each second, so it's going to be the last one, uh, feet each second. So basically, you just have to understand what the slope is, what the um, y-intercept is, and that slope is going to be a rate of change. Fine. In 1991, the moose population in a park was measured to be 3390. By 1996, the population was measured again to be 4540. If the population continues to change linearly, Find a formula for the moose population, P, in terms of t's, the year since 1990. So we have two points here, uh, 1991, or it's going to be one year after 1990, um, would be 3390 in that year. And then in 1996, which is six years after 1990, uh, the population was 4540. So if we subtract the, the rise or the vertical change and divide that by the horizontal change, we can get our slope. So 4540 minus 3390 divided by 5 is 230. And then we need y-intercept. So Pick one of the points, I'll pick the first one. So 3390 is the y is equal to 230 times our x, which is 1, plus b. So b is just going to be 3390 minus 230. So it'd be 3160. That gives us our equation p of t equals 230t plus 3160. And then they want us to predict the moose population in, in 2009. So if you do 2009 minus 1990, that's 19 years. So we basically need P of 19. So 230 times 19 plus 3160. And that's going to give us 7530. Number 10, uh, simplify the expression completely and we're given 1 over 11y to the negative 6. Mm. So what they mean by this is we just need to get rid of the um, negative exponent. So we bring it up to the top, the 11 stays down because it doesn't have an exponent. 11, we want to write the fifth root of x to the 6 using rational exponents, so the 6 is going to be your top number, 5 the bottom number. Number 12, we're solving the equation uh, 8y squared minus 6y minus 9 equals 0. So I encourage you to use the quadratic formula, and of course you can use that right in your calculators, because we programmed it. And you're going to get the two answers of minus 3 fourths and 3 halves. Number 13, uh, we need to take c of x, which is equal to x minus 2 times x plus 4 times x minus 5. And we want its uh, c-intercepts. So c-intercepts are where x equals 0. So plugging in 0 for x, we get 0 minus 2 times 0 plus 4 times 0 minus 5. So in other words, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8 times negative 5 would be 40. So there's one c-intercept and it's 0, 40. <clears throat> uh, to get your 
x-intercepts, we're going to take the equation and set it equal to 0. So this time c of x is 0. And of course we're going to get x equals 2, x equals negative 4, x equals 5. So that gives us the intercepts 2, 0, negative 4, 0, and 5, 0. Number 14, we have the inequality x minus 5 times x minus 2 squared greater than 0. So the place where it equals 0 would be at x equals 5 and x equals 2. <clears throat> so we're going to plot those on a number line. And then we're going to pick um, test points before, after, and in between. So 0, 3, and 6. So if I put 0 in, i got to ask myself, is that greater than 0? Well, negative times a negative squared would actually be negative, so no. Because negative 2 squared is 4, 4 times negative 5 is negative 20, that's not greater than 0. If I put 3 in, I get negative 2 times 1, that's also negative, so no. And lastly, we'll put 6 in. So we have positive times a positive, that's definitely going to be greater than 0. So only the last interval works, and in an interval notation, uh, that would be 5 to infinity. Uh, but that's not an answer on here. You want the um, just the inequality version, so that's just going to be x greater than 5 is your answer. Last one, number 15. A vehicle purchased for $22,400 depreciates at a constant rate of 8%. Determine the approximate value of the vehicle 13 years after purchase. For this one, you need the, uh, the formula, um, which is f of x is equal to a times 1 plus r to the x power. Um, and r is the 15% or 0.15. a is where you're starting. So in this case, 22,400. And, oh, I'm sorry, R is not 15, it's 0 0.08. And uh, 13 years is going to be your time. Okay, so if we plug all this in, um, F of 13 is equal to... 22,400 times 1 plus 0.08 all raised to the 13 power. So when I put this in the calculator, I'm going to do well, 1 plus 0.08 is 1.08. I'm going to raise that to the 13th power. And I'm going to multiply that by 22,400. Oh. <clears throat> okay, I guess I messed up on the recording there. Um, so when we put it in with 1 plus 0 0.08, we end up getting a number higher than 22,400. So that makes us realize that we need to subtract the 0 0.08 instead of add and when you do that, then you get uh, numbers smaller, the 7577.